थ्री टू वन so today we will be speaking to dr anuj grover and getting to learn a little bit more about his work his lab and the people that work there so good morning sir good morning sunishka my first question to you today would be could you tell us a little bit about your lab and the work that you do there uh my lab is called vlsi circuits and systems lab we call it vikas and uh, in my lab we primarily work on digital circuits and systems and uh a lot of our work is driven by problems that we have in the industry uh a lot of our work is on low power uh and error resilient designs and uh we also work on uh a wide range of associated topics like how to manage mismatch how to manage uh, uh low voltage variations how to manage uh, ir drop Uh, error resilience radiation hardening and a wide range of such topics so uh i would say that in our lab we work very close to what a customer would need and, uh, and that's primarily because we are strongly influenced by industry and a lot of our lab students work very closely with the industry oh okay sir so could you also tell us a little bit more about the work that you do in the lab right now okay so in my lab we primarily work in three major themes uh one big theme is in memory compute just to explain a little bit about it uh in traditional computing systems there is a computational uh, or a or a processor and uh, there is a memory memory stores information processor processes it mm-hmm. and there is a lot of data transfer that happens between the two in advanced systems where we have uh, a lot of uh, data transfers happening because of a lot of sensor data available a lot of machine learning happening a lot of artificial intelligence algorithms running on the system uh, this data transfer alone can take up to 30% of system power when we do in memory compute then the memory kind of behaves like the human brain a human brain stores information and also processes it so in memory compute does does something like that where we not only store information inside the memory we also compute or process that information within the memory uh we already talked about it being much lower power because data transfer is not required it is also much denser because now uh memories are full custom circuits and when you make other circuits around it which are which would otherwise be uh, say machine driven or designed uh, and you convert them into full custom circuits you save a lot of area and uh, the beautiful thing is that you also save uh, you know or you also improve performance so in in vlsi there are three key things that we talk about power performance and area we call it ppa so when you go for in memory compute you improve all three of them power performance area and uh, i i am i'm you know i very commonly say that it is like pancho ungliyan ghee mein aur sar kadhai mein so it's uh, it's it's a win 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 on all the three axes for us so that is one major theme that we are working on uh additionally we are working on themes related to low power and uh, uh graceful aging so just like you know when we age our responses slow down uh probability of accidents increases failures increases very similarly uh when chips age they also start to fail and uh, if we have these chips being used inside let us say a car uh you do not want them to fail you want them to continue to operate they they issue a warning but they, you do not want them to fail at all so uh in my lab we are working on a range of designs which help in graceful aging we are working on sensor designs we are working on machine learning algorithms which can uh preempt the age or preempt the failure before it occurs raise a warning flag so that whenever your car goes for uh, a service next the engineer they can know and uh, they can replace the chip this 
prevents failures, this prevents accidents, this prevents uh, loss of life and property. So this is another big theme that we are working on. Uh, another theme that we are working on in our lab is around uh, on-chip characterization. In advanced technologies, uh, we have integrated a lot of devices onto us every single chip. Come to think of it, you know, about 20 years back, the phone was just a calling device. Mm -hmm. Then came iPhone. It became a calling device and a music playing music player. Then it had a touch screen. It had many more functions. Today's iPhone or today's phone have much stronger, much powerful processors than some of the laptops five years back. Mm -hmm. So when you integrate so much functionality onto a chip, testing it becomes a huge cost. And uh, we need more diagnostics to be able to identify failures and prevent such failing parts from being shipped to the customers. So this third theme that we are working on is about uh, measuring uh, diagnostics on the chips so that we can preempt failures and not ship failing parts to the customers. So that's the third primary theme. And uh, then associated with these three big umbrella themes, there are many smaller projects that my M.Tech students take up, that uh, B.Tech students in my lab take up. They could be linked to radiation hardened designs, error resilient designs, a, a wide range of associated topics also we work on. Mm -hmm. So initially there was a little bit about diagnostics, preventative measures and also uh, a change in the way a chip functions itself by uh, integrating memory onto it and doing the processing there itself. Uh, my other question to you would be, why all of these um, are low power? Why is low power that important? Oh, low power is, is actually very important. Mm -hmm. Come to think of it, uh, today electronics is very pervasive. You have pacemakers, mm -hmm. they're embedded next to your heart, placed next to your heart. It, they have a battery associated with them. If the design of the pacemaker is not low power, then instead of replacing that pacemaker after say 10 years, you will need to replace it after five years. That's huge. Uh, like that's, that's invasive mm -hmm. aspect of uh, not having low power designs. But irrespective of that, uh, today the kind of computations that we do and the number of computations that we do is humongous. I was reading somewhere and uh, we saw that uh, the total number of computations that are happening in the world today are uh, 180 times more than they were happening about six years back. So that many more computations would mean that much more power com consumption. Mm -hmm. So if we do not become much more power efficient, then we are actually uh, either we will not be able to do as many computations because the chips will become very hot. Or if we are able to do as many computations by advanced cooling mechanisms, then uh, we, are, we are having a huge burden on the environment. Mm. So uh, low power is, is definitely necessary to support further advancement, further in improvement in our quality of life to ensure that we remain environment friendly or we become much more and more environment friendly as we move forward. So low power is, is not just about, uh, as I mentioned, about the aspect of life. It is also about the aspect of, you know, bigger life mm -hmm. in terms of the impact on the environment. So low power is, is, a, a, is a very key figure of merit for any product that we design, uh, any product that sells, uh, your cell phone, the kind of life it would have mm -hmm. uh, in terms of on one charge, that's a very key selling point. A smartwatch, how long can you run it without recharging it? Mm -hmm. That's a key selling point. So, uh, low power for many, many reasons. Finally, I'd like to ask you what have been the accomplishments in the past in your lab and what do you see to uh, accomplish in the future or focus in the future? Three students in our lab have already won uh, PM fellowship. So uh, we have three PM scholars in my lab. What that means is that 
whatever fellowship they would get from their regular stipend that is doubled up uh, by the pm office so this is a, this is a recognition because only 100 scholars are recognized across the country for such awards so three students in my lab have won such awards uh, then in addition to that we regularly publish in some of the best venues across the world uh, it's difficult to keep a count of how many publications how many patents we have filed but they are a regular in our lab so anyone interested can go to the website and find out more about those things but uh, yes i think i'm i'm happiest about the fact that uh, three we have three pm scholars mm -hmm. uh, from our lab and uh, this is a big achievement in terms of going forward i think uh, we will continue to work a lot on in memory compute that's a uh, up and coming field uh, there is a lot of decision making a lot of work that needs to go into it and it holds a lot of promise as i said you know you gain on performance you gain on power and you gain on area all the three key axes so uh, we will definitely continue to work on in memory compute we will also continue to work on graceful aging because what what i have realized until now is that uh, new phenomena of aging emerge as technology scales mm. so you need to be on top of all of them and what is also important is that uh, uh, we need to make our algorithms more and more mature mm -hmm. so uh, aging is another thing that we will continue to work on and uh, i'm actually very open to new projects coming from new industry partners uh, where if they have some particular need around uh, subsystem design memory subsystem design bist design anything like that we would definitely want to take them up and work on them it was very nice to talk to you today it was my pleasure sunishka and learning about your lab was very insightful and it would be great if you could also go to the lab and uh, speak to the people there as well sure let's go my broad area of research is in memory computing in which they try to merge the compute and the processing clocks so my work is on modeling on this imc architectures so that we can make good design choices for our uh, uh, implementations of our algorithms so the key challenges is to that we need to make a accurate model of the of the imc architectures so that we can say that our model is accurate we need to model all the nonlinearities in our model and it will help the designer to make the design decisions at the earlier stages which will enable him to save the cost as well as the time for the whole project ic testing or chip testing is no longer a back end issue it evolves into a front end crisis which needs a cost effective and high performance solution so my active area of research is to test or to characterize the soc or test chip uh, over the over the various parameters or functionalities as the technology is scaled the complex ic may fail because of so many reasons so uh, i am designing on chip solutions for in depth characterization of socs which can effectively characterize the uh, dynamic ir drop leakage current temperature delay uh, metastability issues and so many so many reasons of failure mode so this work is in collaboration with st microelectronics and it's very interesting work recently i have also been awarded by uh, pm scholarship in conventional approach to safeguard the system from aging related degradation we introduce timing margins as the chips become slow we add timing margins however in advanced node technologies it is prohibited in terms of area and it also significantly impacts power consumption and performance i intend to carry out my research on this problem statement our objective is to predict the aging of an ic by establishing correlation between indirect aging parameters using machine learning and implementing a dynamic compensation mechanism to respond and adjust to aging my area of research is a analog imc in analog imc what we are doing along with transferring information on the bit line we are computing information as well if we do the computation while reading the data then we 
can easily improve the energy efficiency of the system. Earlier, we have completed the digital IMC architecture. Right now, we are on the edge of completing the analog IMC architecture. We have a quite uh, good number of uh, uh, publications as well from my architecture. So we have patented two of our circuits. One circuit is filed as a patent and the other circuit is in the process of filing patent. And I have uh, I have multiple uh, publications as well. One publication I have in AI CAS, uh, Artificial Intelli Intelligence on Circuit and System, which is a flagship conference of Circuit and System Society that happens in Korea. And other publication is in Indicon, uh, one of the architecture that I have published in, in Indicon. And uh, the last presentation, the last uh, publication is in Willis ID, which uh, for which we have filed, the, we have initiated the patent filing as well. There are certain reliability mechanisms such as the HCI, the BTI effects, the TTDB and etc. These, uh, they, uh, made, uh, they basically hamper the reliability of the ICs in the long run and it leads to aging and other phenomena. So we need to have some solutions which are able to monitor these variations and also provide certain uh, compensatory techniques so that we can control the effects. In my research work, basically I'm trying to design certain on-chip sensors like the interconnect sensor, the uh, off-current monitoring sensor, the aging sensor. And we're trying to integrate these sensors which will be uh, picking data from its field of operation it will be analyzing and processing data and it will provide compensatory techniques such as the uh, body biasing and the voltage scaling techniques to counter such uh, variations. So uh, to design and implement such solutions, I am working in collaboration with ST Microelectronics and also have been awarded the Prime Minister's Research Fellowship for the same. And uh, I'm hoping and I'm trying to bring about certain significant uh, value with the help of my research.